Hello and welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you're watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Guys, if you don't mind, please smash the like button on this video. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. It'll push the video out to more people. That way more viewers can see this just like you've seen today. And also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you as soon as a new video is live. And we do put out several each day. So thank you again so much for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys. I want to update you guys a little bit on what's going on in the war in Ukraine. Uh, we got some information coming out here. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, there was an oil facility, uh, basically an oil depot in St. Peter Petersburg, Russia, that was attacked by several drones um, from Ukraine. So it looks like their air defense in Russia was able to shoot uh, most of them down, and one of them struck the oil facility. I guess it landed in between two of these uh, oil containers that you can see on the screen. And uh, there was a fire. I guess it was extinguished and put out. There were no injuries or anything like that. But um, I, I thought it was interesting that we're seeing a lot of explosions and, and uh, attacks inside St. Petersburg. And if you guys are not aware, St. Petersburg is where... Vladimir Putin was born. So is this a like a message being sent to Putin, you know, to tell him that, you know, Ukraine is going all in and they, they want to eliminate Putin? Um, I'm not sure what it is, but I've got a video up here playing. I don't know if you guys remember this as well. This was a, a like a massive warehouse. I think it was something like 7,000 square feet or something like that. I could be wrong. But it was a really, really large warehouse, and somehow it caught on fire and it burned to the ground. And, uh, you know, if you look at this picture, I mean, look at the smoke. It's insane. You know, it's like almost like a, an eruption from a volcano or something. It's a lot of smoke, a lot of black smoke. And, uh, you know, this, this went on for a whole day, um, I think 24, 48 hours actually inside St. Petersburg. And it happened late at night, and this building caught on fire and burned to the ground. So... Um, very ominous. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's any connection here. I don't, I'm not sure if that this fire here was, was related to the, you know, the Ukrainians or anything like that. Um, but Ukraine is consistently still trying to attack Russia inside their country. We also have word that, uh, Belgorod was attacked as well within the last 24 hours. So, um, we know that Belgorod is starting to evacuate their citizens there because Belgorod is, is right on the border of Russia and Ukraine. So they're getting the bulk of the attacks from the Ukrainians. So I kind of want to just go over some information here with you guys, give you guys some updates on what's happening with Ukraine. Um, let's go ahead and go over some of these articles here that I got for you. Pull this one up. There it is. So, um, yeah, so it looks like Kiev targets St. Petersburg oil facility that you see there in the picture. It's a rare drone attack on Putin's home city. So, yeah, Putin was born here in St. Petersburg. So not sure if this is a message being sent to him or what it is, but let's go ahead and read this. So Kiev has targeted an oil facility inside Russian uh, city of St. Petersburg, more than 500 miles away from Ukraine in a rare long range uh, drone attack on Vladimir Putin's hometown. Russian media claimed three drones were fired towards the city, two were downed in the Gulf of Finland, and one outlet claimed there had been a fire after a third explo a drone exploded between two fuel tanks. Okay, so one of them did strike. A, U a Ukrainian military source has to since told Reuters that the drones hit their targets, adding that the longer range attacks were part of a new phase of the war. Uh, and Russian authorities also reported a missile attack on the city of El uh, Belgorod, as I was just explaining, close to the border. Local governor um, via Cheslav Gladkov said air defenses had downed all 10 missiles, but uh, that one person had been injured. So, yeah, lots of people are getting attacked over here in, in Belgorod. And this war is still going on, guys. I, I know I don't report much on Ukraine because I feel like uh, many people have have become like desensitized to what's going on over there because it's just been a constant exchange of fire back and forth and back and forth. And there's not really a whole lot of progress in terms of land being taken away or taken back. Um, you know, the Ukrainians had basically a failed spring offensive uh, last year 
And the Russians don't seem to be taking much land either. They're kind of just holding holding put there. And I, I believe that uh, this is being done on purpose. Uh, that Russia is is preparing for a massive assault this year, probably sometime in the spring or into the summer. I think they're going to launch a massive assault on uh, Ukraine here very soon. And I think they're preparing for that. And maybe that's why they're they're not so much attacking into Ukraine. They're kind of just holding their positions because they're they're setting up for their large scale attack. That's probably going to be coming this year because we've got so many different things going on. Lots of different elections happening. Trump potentially getting back in. I'm going to talk to you guys about that in just a second. Um, but let's go over this article as well here. I want to show you guys this. Um, so right now, uh, Zelensky was at the World Economic Forum for the last couple days. And he was uh, talking to you know all the different countries around the world, all these elites, letting them know how badly their country's struggling. They need money. They need uh, weapons, and weapons especially, as you can see here. Um, so Zelensky's warning that uh, the war must not become frozen um, as Ukraine's troops face shortages of weaponry and aid. So they need aid, they need weapons, they, they're short on everything. They're even short on troops. And um, I know that uh, President um, Zelensky has ordered up, I think, 500,000 more troops is conscripted. So they're, they're preparing for something big coming here pretty soon, and they're not getting the aid that they need, and the U.S. is holding up about $60 billion in Congress in aid and weapons for them, and they desperately need it right now because they're being attacked all the time. They don't, they don't have any air defense or anything like that. So Ukraine is definitely struggling right now, guys. So I kind of wanted to go over this and let you know what he said a little bit over here at the conference for the World Economic Forum. So Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made a passionate plea to leaders at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, urging them not to allow Russia's war in Ukraine to become frozen. I think by frozen, they mean like, um, you know, we have Trump coming pretty soon. Um, and if he gets in office, potentially, he could put a war, an end to the war in Ukraine. He's already stated that he'll try to do that. We'll see what happens when he gets in, if he does. Um, but also many countries are, are trying to put up plea deals and they were talking about this at the World Economic Forum too, um, or, or, or plea deals to basically call for peace. I mean, peace deals, sorry. Um, so will the, will the peace deal happen? I'm not sure, but Zelensky is basically warning we can't have peace, guys. We, we need to win this war and that's it, end of it. Basically saying that, that Russia needs to be destroyed, um, you know, Vladimir Putin needs to be removed and... That's the only way the end of this is going to happen. There, there will be no peace aside from that is basically what he's warning. So at the start of his address, uh, he delivered in English. He said he understood many in the audience would be asking difficult questions. When will the war end? Is the Third World War possible? Is it time to negotiate <coughs> Excuse me, with Putin? Zelensky warned any frozen conflict will eventually reignite is what he says pointing to how Russia renewed its aggression after attempts to freeze the war in Donbass after 2014. Instead, he said Ukraine needed to be provided with more weapons to bring about just um, and stable peace. So again, he's warning here, we, we don't need a peace deal because Putin will just attack again is basically what he's saying. They did that in 2014, then they did it again um, just two years ago. So... Um, I'm assuming here that that Zelensky's worried that that Putin wants all of Ukraine, and I think that's the most like realistic outcome here is that Putin does want to take Ukraine completely. He doesn't want just you know uh, the Donbass and stuff like that. He wants all of Ukraine. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that. But he did put out some warnings there. He's trying to get as much help as he can. We also had. Uh, Zelensky running through the Baltics. He went to Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and he was trying to get some help over there. He did get some aid packages. But uh, we do have some breaking news here as well coming out from France uh, that they are actually going to be helping out as, as well. Um, they're going to be giving Ukraine some, uh, some weapons here. So let's go over this real quick. France ramps up weapons production for Ukraine and says Russia is scrutinizing the West's metal. France announced more planned deliveries of its Caesar 
artillery system to Ukraine on Thursday and accelerated weapons manufacturing as it seeks to avoid depleting its own military stocks while continuing to support the war effort against Russia's invasion. The logic of seeding uh, material from, or excuse me, taken from the army's stocks is reaching its end. The French uh, defense minister, Sebastien Lecornu, said in an interview with Le Parcien, uh, from now on, the solution is to directly connect French defense ministries with the Ukrainian army. So they are going all in. And we just had UK as well come out. Uh, Rishi Sunak, prime minister, he um, declared he was going to be setting up a drone facility for them uh, inside Ukraine and also uh, building some drone facilities abroad inside the UK to provide them um, thousands of drones, guys, lots and lots of drones. So France has also launched a drive to fund uh, the delivery of 78 Caesar self-propelled 155 millimeter howitzers to Ukraine this year. Ukraine has already paid for six of the guns itself, and France will provide 50 million euros to deliver 12 more, Le Cornu said, separately in a speech. France is also seeking 280 million euros from other allies of Ukraine to pay for the 60 um, other Caesars, the minister said. Ukrainian defense minister... Rustem Umarov, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking by video link, said Russian forces are firing five times more artillery shells, even ten times more in some places than Ukrainian forces along the front lines, and that stronger artillery is one of our key needs to win this war. So that is something that is really happening a lot right now. We, there's massive attacks going on all the time that are, many of them are not even being reported in Ukraine. They are being heavily bombarded right now, and they have been since basically the start of the year or just a few weeks before the year, the new year began. Russia has been pummeling Ukraine, and uh, Ukraine just doesn't have anything to defend themselves. They're, they're short on anti-air uh, defense as well, so many of these missiles are coming right in and just shelling these towns, and many people are getting killed, and it's still really bad over there just because it's not being reported much. Doesn't mean that it's not happening, guys. So I just wanted to give you the latest on that. Um, and also, uh, it looks like Zelensky put out a warning as well uh, for Donald Trump should he get back into office. Okay? So I want you guys to see this also. Zelensky has a warning for Donald Trump. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky issued a warning to former U.S. President Donald Trump about what could lie ahead if Russia is allowed to succeed in Ukraine. Close that ad. Uh, speaking to members of the media in Davos, Switzerland, Zelensky posed questions about what Trump plans to do in the event that Russian President Vlad Vlad or, excuse me, Vladimir Putin expands his aggression outside of Ukraine, such as if Moscow decided to invade a NATO alliance member. There's so much talking about this now, about Moscow or you know Russia potentially invading a NATO nation. And and then when when the idea gets brought up, we get people like President Biden um, basically shooting the idea down and say, "Nah, that's nonsense. That would never happen." But there's so much talk about this right now. And if you guys haven't seen one of my recent videos, I put a video out about uh, some German documents that were leaked. They were military documents, and they were basically proving that Germany, along with so many other European countries, are preparing for a massive war with Russia. And um, I just think that's interesting because this is getting brought up so much now. And then we have these German leaked documents that came out and were literally saying the same thing. So is that going to happen? Is is that what Zelensky is really warning about here? So let's let's see what he has to say. So then the question is, what will Trump do after that? If after Ukraine, Russia occupies a NATO country, he's basically saying what what happens after he takes Ukraine and then he now he's attacking NATO. Um, so uh, he said, I mean, he decided that if you don't freeze this conflict. If you let Putin go all the way to Ukraine, then he will stop, he continued, but Putin will not stop. So what will Donald Trump do in the United States after that? Because in that case, it means that Europe lost and the, and lost the largest and most powerful army in Europe because it lost Ukraine. So basically, he's warning there that if we allow Putin to completely take over Ukraine now, you know, the, the rest of NATO and Eastern Europe is at risk of, of war against 
Putin, which I would agree with that because technically the only reason we're not fighting, you know, Russia right now is because we're basically using Ukraine as a proxy to fight for us. If it wasn't Ukraine, it would be it would be the United States and and NATO. And uh, Biden came out recently and said that as well during a uh, like a press conference. He said that if you know if Ukraine were to lose the war, that we would put boots on the ground and your your children would be fighting this war inside of Ukraine. Okay, so it's very possible that something like that can happen, guys. And you know. We just we never know really, but uh, you know it's it's really bad what's happening over here as well. And again, just because things are not being reported doesn't mean nothing's going on over there. So there is a lot happening in Ukraine. It's just most of the most of the the media attention is directed towards what's happening with the Houthis right now. So even like Gaza stuff going on between Israel and Hamas, even that stuff's not being reported much anymore. I'll see reports coming out. Talking about, you know, yeah, there was some some airstrikes going on in Gaza. Some people were killed, but that's it. There's really not much else going on in Gaza aside from that. And people have become desensitized to what's going on. And this tends to happen. You know, these regions will flare up and then all of a sudden the, the attention gets diverted to a new area where now other countries are fighting each other. So, like, for example, right now the new... The new front opening up is Pakistan and Iran right now with these airstrikes they've been launching on each other. So it just kind of keeps jumping around and going to different countries. And, uh, you know, Ukraine's kind of getting lost in the in the balance over here. They're, they're just kind of the low-hanging fruit. Um, and no one's really paying attention to them, you know. But they are being attacked all the time, guys. And uh, Ukraine has been attacking Russia a lot as well. There's lots of exchange of fire going back and forth. And... Like I told you guys before, something big is coming, especially with this conflict with Ukraine. I think that all this attention being diverted to the Middle East could just be a complete, um, like a diversion tactic to keep everybody focused on what's going on down there. But really the big deal, what's really happening is what's what's going on in Ukraine. And no one's really reporting on it anymore. So I just wanted to keep you guys up to date on that, let you know kind of what's going on over there in Ukraine and it's still not looking good for them. And, you know, any day now we're looking at a, a massive offensive coming from uh, Russia. So stay tuned for that. If anything happens, I will definitely update you guys immediately on what's going on. But this is the latest with this oil facility being attacked in St. Petersburg. And my question is, is this a, is this a message to Vladimir Putin from Zelensky that they're not going to give up and they will not give in and they'll continue to fight till the bitter end? I guess we'll have to see what happens. But thank you so much again for tuning in. Hopefully you guys got something out of this today. We'll see you all in the next one. Take care and God bless.